All right, guys, welcome back to Conscious Evolution. I'm AJ. I'm joined with a special guest today. Uh, her name is Kaz. She has a YouTube channel called Curious. And you should all go over there and subscribe immediately. And while I'm thinking about it, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel as well. And I'll have the link to uh, Kaz's channel below. All right, everybody, meet Kaz. How you doing? Hey, how you guys doing? Love and light, love and light. <laughs> Yeah, we had um, originally scheduled the show for last weekend, but that didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> no, the joys of stepping out of linear timeline means now, yeah, it's very difficult for me to resonate with those kind of things. So I was like, oh, goodness, it's gone past the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. I, know, I was like, I was just laying there waiting, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that, I did well, that I just was, was so jacked up with all the scheduling and everything I had planned to do everyone had something come up and like literally I I'd like overbooked myself so I would have I would have been dead if I did all those recordings I had like five of them set up and oh, it would have been back to back to back to back all day and it, it ended up being like one show at 10 o'clock at night no, I, I did uh, with Rebecca last Sunday. That's right. That was the one I just posted. Um, and then I did one with Bonesy, but that was at like literally 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. We're both just like. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, we've got to have that rest time. Got to get that balance. It's hard though, isn't it? Always striving for it. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. So let's. Uh... How, uh, when did you start your YouTube channel? Oh, um, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was like January, February. I was kind okay. of like, okay, I need to do this now. Like, cause I wanted to do it. Oh, probably for years and years now, but it was always kind of like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what was resonating with me and everything. And now it was like the higher self was like, no, no, you got to sit down. You got to do this now. And I was like, okay. <laughs> So it's in it's in its early stages. I'm still trying to you know work out how I want to relay my information as best as I can, kind of thing. Yeah, I think you're doing good. I you know I I saw it. It resonated with me, and I've sent it to a few other people now. And you know I I hope that's this is kind of what I want to do. Like I want to I just want to talk to to other people with other channels or, or you don't need a channel, but you know, other people in the awakening process, um, whether you are just starting or you've been doing it for years, like that's, that's what I feel like I, I should do and bring that knowledge. Cause that's, that's bringing so much more knowledge than I can individually put out there. You know what I mean? And I think that's a great benefit to, to whoever's listening. So I think that's I like that's what I feel like I, I should be doing with this, and so that's what I'm I'm working on now. So thanks for joining me today. I'm glad to have you on the channel. Thank you for having me, darling. It's been an honor. It is finally uh, nice to finally see you, talk to you. I'm glad it worked yeah. out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, obviously you did that rest last week, didn't you? So yeah. we like to see it as my higher self. Like it just knew that. Yeah, we're right with that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's not ready yet. He's not. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's just like, give him a rest. Like, you don't want to chew his ear off, for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah. The, um, so how did you feel with the energies yesterday? Because I know I had a, I don't know, I just felt like tension almost all day. I don't know if you, you felt that in your part of the world or not, but it was like, it's just like I felt like I needed to do something like all the time, but I didn't know what to do. It was, and then the day before that, I had like a nasty headache all day long, and I couldn't get rid of it. So I know these last two days, and today too, it still feels like I'm a little tense, but not as bad. But I, I I've noticed I felt more sensitive to energy now, uh, like mm. planetary energy and all that stuff. And then I seen the other day that, or I think I saw yesterday that there was a, um, I can't think of it now, almost like a CME, like a son had, you know, let loose one of those little ones and it was coming here today. I like think it was projected mm -hmm. to be here tonight. Yeah, big wave. Yeah, big wave. So yeah, I mean, are you, are you like that as well? Because I believe you said that to me last weekend that you were just... <laughs> Dealing with energy. Very much, yeah. I understand <laughs> it. Wave, 
coming through. I'm getting knocked down every single time. Um, I mean, it has been a little bit easier the last couple of days. Um, I noticed it was, you know, as you're dropping in and connecting with the teachings more, I was able to settle down because it was that what you were getting, you know, kind of ants in your pants, like feeling like you really had yeah. to be doing something. So I was like, okay, I need to obviously connect and go through my teachings. As I said, I was pulled in this way to brush out a lot of my dreads because it holds the energy and everything. And my higher shell self was showing that really clearly is like this wave is like a light wave that's pushing through a lot of like dense energy and baggage that we're holding on to, you know, things from our past that no longer serve us to just remove that out. So obviously it depends what kind of energy you're sitting in. If it's more the positive, then obviously you're going to be feeling the more benefits from it as we hold on to it. I was I was seeing other people going through quite severe anxiety attacks, panic attacks and things like that. Mm. As obviously they're holding on to the denser energies, not understanding it. So it was interesting for me to have the two sides of the coin. You know, I could relate with my own energy and then I was able to see what it's like when you're not connecting with the teachings and you know you're trying to avoid things like it doesn't go well obviously no no, no. that's what I, I feel like i feel like that's when you see people like lash out and get aggressive like everyone in the old energies that they just and, and this has been happening more and more like the last two months especially that i've really been noticing it that they just lash out at like the drop of a hat. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like zero to 60 in, in, in a second. And the people know, usually right? aren't that way, you know, because I've known these people, like especially at work, I've known them for, for years now. And I mean, it's like the little things and they know this person is just there to instigate them. And then it's just like, boom. And then it's like full out arguments in front of customers and stuff. Like it's, it's getting escalating a lot. Ah, that's interesting like, obviously you can see it from that side more like the, with the general public and everything for me I've, I've stepped out of that a little bit um myself so it's really interesting to see that that you, you know we can't avoid it now it's really it's coming right up into our faces you know people are having to really reevaluate things and that's what obviously this wave's doing is to push things through bring things up to the surface see if we can transmute them into the positive obviously that's where we connect with the spiritual side so we can kind of recognize that a little bit more and to implement or obviously the compassionate countenance that we have towards them to flex those esoteric muscles that we're building to you know see when people go from that zero to 60 and to be able to catch ourselves and instead like I know my problem was reacting a lot so mm -hmm. it's to take that moment to see that God side in them you know to see that they are struggling it's not that they're doing it out of like malicious intent or anything like that it's not like they've sat there and gone do you know what I've decided I'm going to be an asshole right now it's not that at all you know <laughs> they're just riding their own way so it, you know it's interesting to look at it from that scope now and it's obviously much more beneficial to myself like to be able to drop into that center whereas before as I said you you'd find your ego reacting, wouldn't you? You know, you want to protect yourself. You don't want to be listening to this dribble that they're shouting at you and you'd be like, hang on a minute, let me tell you something. So it's mm -hmm. really nice now to be able to calm that down and just be like, look, I know it's nothing to do with me. I know these waves are coming through now. So the more you obviously you engage with the teachings that are out there, it just builds up that conscious countenance, doesn't it? Where you can drop mm -hmm. into your space of being like, no, I know what's going on. It's okay. We're just transmuting through kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, it's, that's, uh, I hadn't even thought of it like that. That's kind of something that, you know, but these guys that work like later on, like after the fact, you know, when they calm down, I, I talk to them about it. I'm like, hey, dude, what's up, man? Like, you just flipped out for like really no reason. You know what I mean? Like, you good? Like, you all right? And then I'll have that conversation and, and they know that there's something wrong, but they, you know, whether they are into it on this side or not, it you know, doesn't matter. They still recognize that something is different and that something is yeah. off. So I think they're maybe a little more open to learning why, you know, so bring that up. But anyways, I found that they be, uh, they, they were more interested in, in hearing things that I say that maybe they wouldn't be otherwise. Mm. That's, that's yeah, no, no, I've definitely noticed that, yeah, people are becoming more and more open to seeing, you know, what is going on behind the scenes, because 
I mean, let's face it, we all knew deep down, we all have that feeling that something isn't right in our world. Like, this isn't how we're meant to live. This isn't how we're, you know, safe and happy and nurtured. And, you know, as I said, with these waves, it's just pushing it further and further through and these people really having to address it. I mean, obviously I've had to address it too. This is how I ended up getting on the teachings because, you know, the waves were getting so intense. It was like, hang on a minute, you need to sit down and start doing your learning on this. And I was like, oh yeah, no, I do. And then it starts to make more and more sense, the more you open yourself up to it. And so that's what they're having to do is open up, but you've got to get those demons out, unfortunately. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. And that's <laughs> like, that's, that's what you have to do first like that's priority one you know you gotta you gotta deal with that fear that fear is just uh, what i heard it the other day it was uh very clever false evidence appearing real that's all fear is fear is your false oh, like you know so mm -hmm. you gotta get past that and you know most of your fears are 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 built on a foundation of of false beliefs and once you learn that none of that shit is real, it kind of helps it, you know, kind of helps you get past it. Cause I had a lot of issues with like, um, like horror movies that I saw when I was like five years old that like really jacked me up as a kid and it stuck with me till now, you know, I still had like bad thoughts and, and dreams and even still sometimes I'll have that, that glimmer of a, something pop into my head even though I dealt with it it doesn't scare me it doesn't bother me but it's like hmm, it's still there on a subconscious level uh and I'm aware of that now so if that comes up and I can deal with it but yeah that's um forgot where I was going with that but <laughs> <laughs> you let yourself go with it go with the flow yeah. that's it <laughs> so but no I know exactly what you mean with the, like um the horror films and stuff because that was something that I was really connected to when I was younger which is very strange because it's not it's not something that I would say that honors who I am so it was very strange that I ended up falling into this pattern where I ended up watching a lot of horror films like a lot of alien you know the old school like chest bursting kind of stuff um and yeah it does leave that emotional residue absolutely and that that's that's exactly part of the program and that's what they've done to keep us in that fear state to stop us from reaching outwards because it keeps telling you if you reach outwards into the shadows there's all these dark creepy crawlies that are going to come and get you mm -hmm. that's having to try and get past that to be like actually no it's not it's just someone's put the blinkers on me it's not that there's something bad in the shadows it's just i've been told something bad in the shadows that's the difference you know to really see it for what it is yeah and we um unfortunately believe a lot of the things that we're told uh, mm -hmm. especially about darkness and fears like people just believe what they hear and, and just accept that as a truth that's why like that's why i have such a a thing against mainstream media and and all that because people are just so brainwashed with it you know it's like they're they're and there's no value in that like none there's nothing good about mainstream media you're you're nope. it's I'm not even gonna get started on that. <laughs> Stop <laughs> watching like it, right, guys. Just, <laughs> just, just take our word for it. There. Um, yeah, that's the strange thing, isn't it? It's like you see, oh, oh, that's see. I told you I set an alarm this time. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of it. Oh, um, got shit popping. What up. were you saying? So it was about. Yeah, that was the thing I never understood with um, news outlets and stuff because I never really could connect throughout my life with uh, looking at the news and stuff and I was bullied quite a lot by people of authority you know being like well you don't know anything about the world so you don't get to say anything about it if you're not watching the news mm -hmm. so I then ended up watching the news and doing all my learning through that aspect and, I, and then I, I learned obviously why I didn't interact with it I was like it's, it's horrible it's just hot. It just makes you feel bad. I don't know why you want to put that on in the morning with your cup of tea and just get berated with what's wrong in the world. Like, right. I want to turn on like good news. Like, I want to hear about you know puppies and kittens and all the fun things like rainbows and lollipops. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It really doesn't. It really, it really has never made sense to me. But then that's that's part of that conditioning, isn't it? It's like, yeah, the, the codes and the frequencies that are put in, and then people feel like that that where they need to be finding out more again being put down that thing that I got you know the whole well you don't have 
a right to say anything if you're not aware of things so people are falling into that trap like oh I should watch the news so it gives me more awareness but not seeing it for the fact that obviously it's controlled like it's controlled for money at the end of the day as well so when it, that, it's got that behind it you can just be like no nah, no nah, not for me <laughs> that's it you know it's it's a very small group of people own and control what you see and just oh yeah that they do and all the news networks are all the same they all mm -hmm. say the same like script the same rhetoric literally and i mean and it's just corrupt it has been since like the 80s at least that i know of uh if you look it up it, it, there's a plethora of information on that but, <clears throat> excuse me that's kind of how like i uh started listening to the radio with the news or the uh, watching the news because i was like uh someone told me like you got to stay up on current affairs so you have something to talk about with people like with your customers and things like that and i was like hmm i started watching it and then I still didn't have anything to talk about with people like, oh, how about the weather? You know, I don't need the news for that. Or like, yeah, how about this event? Well, I didn't need the news for that either. You know, like, mm -hmm. and now that I don't watch it, I don't talk to people about it because it's negative. It's something, unless yeah. there's something good that happens and we can have a conversation about, it. but I will not talk about negative things with people, especially customers or a random stranger that I'm talking to, you know, that's just a terrible way to have a conversation in my opinion. I won't, I won't do that. Um, I wanted to ask, so I believe we had a conversation before about like higher self and, and all that. So, so tell us what, you know, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Um, so tell us your, your, your process. How did you get into that? How did you find or connect with your higher self? and, and How's that going? <laughs> How'd you do it? How's it going? Yeah, that, that's the question hot on all our lips, really, isn't it? Is mm -hmm. how can we settle down into that higher self center? Um, and as we were just mentioning before we jumped on the recording, was um, I was actually listening to a channeling from Cryon, which was about the higher self. So it was really nice that he gave me that little nudge. So for me, it was through these teachings, through seeing what was wrong and noticing that it was connecting with that that child center of me before i got programmed before i got conditioned and the one that's obviously more centered in joy and love and honor and peace and light and you know all those good things once it starts to resonate with that when your conscious countenance can filter through that information as to what's right for you rather than accepting what you've been told it's very much that kind of um inner child that's the rebel you know it's just you know sees things that are wrong on the playground and wants to come along and just be like no no this isn't how we should do it let's just hug it out and it will be good and that's basically what the higher oversoul self is it's that purer essence of a god source and um, so for me it was very much about pulling in as much information as i could to realize that it wasn't just me that was thinking and feeling these things you know, I wasn't alone in this and feeling strange in the world and isolated, as we're saying about the news, peering out at everything and being like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, none of this makes sense. So and then the more you start to learn about all the other information, all the esoteric side, it just allows you to calm down. And then once you're calm down, you're vibrating and resonating at a higher frequency. And that's effectively what your oversoul is, your higher self. It's being cleared of all those filters of false belief, really. That m waffle made sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it made sense. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's um, that's kind of like once you get to a certain point, um, you start working on those fears, and you get past that, and stop with the conditioning. Once you learn and realize, and you know stop accepting uh, the mainstream propaganda if you will then then the real work starts you know what i mean then you start to gain the knowledge of uh, the esoterics and so on and so forth and then you know like with me something that really surprised me was that i started listening to channelings like 
Yeah. I mean, not very long ago, that was like, no, like that's not good. Like there's something bad about it. But I had never looked into it. I never watched any of them, never listened to them. So then I started getting into it. Somebody, um, somebody doing the, the healing, healing, uh, reconnective healing stuff that I work on, uh, mentioned something about Bashar. So I looked into it and the information just, it just resonated, you know, and they're, they're, they're not saying anything bad. They're trying to tell you how to, to raise your vibration, to be a, a better you, to, to, to just, you know, follow your passion, you know, be in love, live in love, show everybody love and forgive everybody. Like, how is that bad? You know? So exactly. what I tell people now is that it's, yeah, it's a channeling. And if you think like I thought about it, then, then don't think of it as a channeling. Just think of it as information and judge the information. That's it. You know, don't judge the source or where it's coming from because really that's not that important. It doesn't matter. It's the quality of the information and what they're portraying, you know. It's not so much that it's a channel from a being from beyond the veil or, or what have you, which I think is absolutely fascinating. So, um, and then something Cryon said the other day is about uh, the ascension that, you know, you went from your old mindset to to a new mindset. So you completely changed your mind, your your whole mindset, your subconscious and everything. He's like, that's an ascension. Mm. You know, like, I, I never thought of it that way. I was like, well, shit, yeah. That's mm, absolutely, absolutely right. Because, I mean, that's a big vibrational shift from how we are mm. living in fear to just where we are right now and so early into it yet that, that's ascension that's completely and fully like and then you know i guess there's stages of it and so on and so forth we'll just continue to raise the vibration you know live with our higher selves more fully can't find the word but you know what i mean more like <laughs> no, inside of us you know carry it with us rather than above us mm. that's it to bring it into who we are rather than looking at it as like that elusive thing that we can't quite grasp because as you said with the teachings it's all about it's within us and we're obviously taught to look outside of ourselves so that's why you know it's quite difficult to pull it back in it's that inner and outer world conflict isn't it um and i do want to say actually when you're saying about channeling and stuff I, <laughs> if you spoke to me last year about any of this i would have been like nah Yep. honestly i was so conditioned i was like there's no such thing as aliens even though i would look out to the stars and be like it's naive to think we're alone in the universe yeah. but in the same breath i'd be like but there's no aliens though because again it's that conditioning and channeling for me um you know i said the cry and just randomly popped through um so that was like the first introduction and then i saw um barbara goldsmith um she channeled the Pleiadians. And she does it on video and it was the first time that I saw it. And she starts by, um, when they come through, they do all the frequencies. So when I first saw it, I was like, oh my goodness, what the hell is this? Like, I'd never seen anything like that before. Like, I think I'd heard about channeling, but it was something that I hadn't really, you know, delved into, explored and all that. Um, so when you, when you get presented with it firsthand and it's just like, it's that split second moment really, isn't it? Of like, you're either going to connect or you're not. And because yeah. I, I connected and I was like, exactly what you're saying. It's like, because they're talking about light and love and empowering yourself. I was like, well, this isn't wrong then, is it? Like, how could this mm -hmm. be wrong? They're telling me how to love myself and everyone else. Like, how is this a bad thing? And again, because that's that conspiracy theory thing that they do, it, isn't it? it like, exactly. We'll slap that label on it so people won't listen to it and think that it's false. Because um, you can look into that with the, the oh, I can't remember who it was that, it was one of the presidents who basically brought that in, coined the term conspiracy theory. Because if you think about it, every theory is just a theory. So it doesn't matter if it's conspiracy theory or not. It's all like just an idea until we can prove it. Yeah. A conspiracy theory is literally two or more people forming a theory. Yeah, that's it. And you do that in that with like that JF, JFK assassination is when they they started. Um, that was it. Yeah. Criminalizing the the. Or the, the, this where they came up with it and started using the that that phrase to to frame the 
whatever situation they had. I'm not getting into that right now. That's a whole nother show. Um, okay, so I believe we talked about like if you were you'd be able to help me mm. just channel my higher self a little more. Was that right? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's why obviously I was like, okay, thinking before we came on, how can I really explain this? Because obviously when it's something that you do a meditation a lot to try and translate that through, it's like it takes a lot of brain power. So I'll probably be like, hang on a minute. So take your time. You know where I was mentioning about very much to do with it's connecting with your inner child it's really removing those filters of the false belief that everything we were just saying about you know conspiracy theories news everything like that it's to change your conscious countenance to strip that away from your mind and your higher self knows what you're doing it obviously it's on the other side of the veil it's very much connected with everything and it understands that when we start trying it will then start to come through because the thing is and this is how we are controlled a lot is obviously the free will laws that are in place so it's not like we can just have our higher self come in and be like right this is how it is if we're not open and willing to it because you know we are honorable on the other side of the veil it's not like we'd want to put ourselves in that position because you know you do when you're connecting with these teachings i i struggled so much with thinking that i was crazy you know and even though it was stuff that i really resonated with throughout my life um but because i'd been a support worker you know i studied psychology and everything like that so then to start experiencing all these different facets of my mind coming through i was like oh goodness give me a minute kind of thing so it, it did take me a while but so that's the thing with when you do your studies and your teachings, you can fill yourself up a bit too much in the intelligence sense. And that's really gonna put on more filters to you. So it's really, obviously the meditations is for us to quiet our mind, quiet ourselves, so we can drop into it. And then our higher self will literally grab us by the hand and then start showing us things through meditation, through downloads. Um, you know, you can ask as well if you get flashes of information through and you're just like, oh, I didn't quite see that. What is it? And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, we need to keep re-showing it until, again, you're breaking away those filters. So it's it's a process. You've got to remind yourself that it's not something that you can instantly do. You know, you've got to allow yourself that that time to really explore what's right for you because there is no one right answer. We are all different vibrations you know we're all different frequencies yes we're all a reflection of the one true source but we're doing so in our own unique way so that's why when you watch things you know when people are like well you should do this and you should do that that's right for them that's not right for everyone else like there's loads of spiritual stuff that i i really don't like i don't enjoy labelings and terminologies of things they ended up making me more upset because it just felt like they were trying to put me back in that box and we want to get out of the box don't we? We exactly. want to we're dancing with our higher self that's the point so it really is to strip away what we think we should accept and just feel what we accept kind of thing yeah it's um that's mainly what i concentrate on now is is connecting with my higher self and they the higher self or guys whatever you want to say they they started me on this path so i was i was in the you know awakening and to a degree but i had no idea about channelings or healing work or any of that and then i think it was back in october of last year i just had a a image a vision you know just put into my head as i was falling asleep and that you know was basically just i was looking down at my hands and all my hands like every finger was lit up with like a ball of light on it and like what do you do with that <laughs> you know so i uh but that led me into uh finding a healer that has a youtube uh, channel and you know he's talking about light coming out of his hands and stuff so that really took me on this whole other path that I would never thought of otherwise probably and 
you know, now I do the healing work and I'm going to do a training in, uh, in April for it. So to become certified actually now. So that's awesome. I'm really excited for that. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's your higher self, your spirit guides. That's kind of putting you on the, the path you're meant to be on the path you set up prior to coming here is what I think it is. And then I had, um, some card readings done by uh, Jody Reiki Medium 333. I have a couple videos on my channel. Um, and she, I did a healing session with her. And afterwards, she told me that she had an image of one of my guides. Mm. Like, like the guy that's following me around, like with the contract, basically checking off, like, did he get this information? He got that information and so on and so forth. I thought that was really interesting. And then, um, they told her to tell me that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I'm supposed to be doing these healings and, and, and doing that. And that kind of confirmed a lot of things for me too. Um, it, you know, it just feels right. I'm just going with what feels right to me. And I don't think that'll lead me astray. You know, that it's taken me to the right places so far and I'm going to continue to trust it. And I, absolutely it's just a, a, a more enjoyable existence, you know, like, everything is better now there's a lot of challenges like there's a lot of shit that that's like coming down on my head but if you can be that calm be the 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 eye of that hurricane and just be calm and just mm. all that shit can go on around you and just you're just you're just good with it you know it's whatever happens happens it's it's like a plan you know there's a divine plan you have divine guidance you know a team of people that are, are entities beings angels you know whatever word that resonates with you that are here to help you and guide you so you know take take some of that that weight off your shoulders it's not absolutely you gotta let go of that baggage haven't you you just gotta be like just that whole let go and let god and then you realize that you're also a piece of god so that's how you can learn to trust yourself. It's like there's all this other stuff that's going on that you can feel. And once you attribute a more positive, you know, mental countenance towards it, that gives you that allowance, removing that fear, isn't it? Like just being like, no, I'm not going to pay attention to the things that my brain wants to tell me. It's exactly, you know, I just feel right with this. This is what's important. And I want to keep moving forwards with that, as opposed to always be thinking I should be doing this way or that way. Because realistically, we're only here to experience. So with things like, I personally, I hate the term soul contract. <laughs> but that's purely because it's such a human way of explaining oh, things to, yeah. to say that like we've made a contract with ourselves and that if we don't fulfill it yeah. somehow then something bad's gonna happen like I, I no. can't resonate with that like it's not for no. me because it completely changes you know because when you change probabilities so when you do something outside of the norms so you know when you're saying when you start to connect with these teachings and then it's like that snowball effect I've lost my trailer for I hate it when that happens don't like soul don't contracts. Let myself come back <laughs> you don't like the soul contracts and you're going to explain why that's exactly it yeah so it's not that we're restricted to like a one thing like we do come in here and we do ah, 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 ah. <laughs> no. All right. Got some grumpy cats now. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, basically, you have you come in with these ideas of the things that you want to do, but we know how life goes. You can't always do what you wanted to do, and things yeah. change. You know, when you step off into a different direction, that changes the frequencies and energies of everything. So it really isn't about looking at things like you have to do anything. The only thing you have to do is just be. Just, yeah. just be who you are that is the only like contract that you could have you know is just to love yourself <laughs> yeah when i think of soul contracts what i think of is is you you are like your voice is meant to to awaken someone else or you are meant to be in contact with someone else you know what i mean <laughs> i feel like all the people that i am that I am bringing together now is like a soul tribe that 
that that was probably a soul contract for the core group of us. You know what I mean? Like we were just meant to find each other. Other than that, then, you know, there was probably just probably that. And then, you know, help awaken. And then, you know, each person speaking their truth is going to help awaken so many people. So Mm. that's what I think was contracted. Like, okay, when you start talking, I'll hear that. That'll resonate with me and I'll wake up. Hopefully, you know, it's, you know, again, you have free will and you don't, you know, you, it's up to you. You decide if it feels right for you, and, and if that if that's how it is, then then go for it. I think a lot of people with their current belief system that's built on a very hang on, I'm not getting it. So when people like hear these things that that you know I was saying before that like when I hear truth, like my whole body just like it's like get chills almost. You know, it's like a mm. a, a crazy feeling. I think. Like especially with um with like religions, organized religions. Like if they hear something esoteric and that they they get that feeling, you know, because you know it's in your DNA. When you get when you hear that those words, those frequencies come at you and it just rings true, that I think is it it shocks them, it scares them, and they have to speak what their false beliefs are to reaffirm their beliefs so they like no no that can't be it this is how it is but you know it felt right to them and it scares them and that's what gives them such a violent or or aggressive reaction towards things and that's what i've been experiencing anyway but that's what i I feel it is like they know it on some level that that's real that's right that is not the devil or whatever it is you know that they think about it and that that makes sense is when they lash out, they start becoming and saying things that that aren't really rational, you know. Mm. So that tells me they're grasping for straws, like they're just really spitballing whatever they can. That that you know, this is how it is. This is how it is. This is how it is. This is what my book says. This is what my book says. Or so on and so forth. But the like, ego's got to step in, hasn't it, and be like, yeah. "Hang on a minute, let me yes. tell you." Like. But you don't, like, I know from my own point of view, when my ego really grabs hold and blasts forth, it makes me feel bad. It, I don't get mm. a good feeling. So they are also in part aware of this. And of course, that is part of the process to, again, identify what's right. But it's those doctrines, you know, those boxes of belief, again, because they were told by an authoritative figure, this is the way things should be. So even though it feels right i mean it's actually quite interesting you know i said i study psychology there's actually um so uh, milgram's uh, theory on obedience and he actually did this where he um had two people separate in um isolated rooms so you've got one that's hooked up to an a, a basically <laughs> electronic torture device you know the um electric shock therapy kind of thing okay. and you've got another person in another room with a guy on white lab coat behind a desk and the other person in the room is being asked these questions and every time they get it wrong they have to give them a shock and obviously it gets up to a certain point where it's going to cause this person pain now obviously it's it's an experiment so no one was actually hooked up to anything it was all recordings and everything so once it hits to like 330 volts something like that they start playing the person screaming and what a lot of people will do is they'll turn around to the authoritative figure and be like, is this okay? Should I continue? And of course, obviously, the experiment was for them to continue. And it was really alarming, the results of the amount of people that would continue to inflict pain on another person, even though it clearly made them feel bad. They were upset. Some of these people were crying. They're hysterically laughing, you know, because it's really causing the person that's doing these shocks a lot of like emotional turmoil as it would but because an authoritative figure is saying no you have to do that they do it so it's it's that whole thing with the church this is how they control us that authoritative figure it dresses it up like no i've been told this it's honoring the teachings of you know my parents maybe told me this or you know i've been going to church for so many years this is the way things should be and it's just that box that keeps us from really resonating with what's true to us and that's why all of the esoteric teachings all the spirituality is like fuck that shit all you need to be doing is focusing on you and what makes you feel good because as we were just saying with that ego it comes forth and then they start saying stuff and you you can see it in them it's like that's not you that is not you that is just the dark forces coming through and riding you like a puppet isn't it because it's that fear 
I was like, oh, no, like, that means I'm not going to, I don't know, get into heaven. I mean, that mm-hmm. whole thing is like, goodness me, like, come on, God's not going to be a punishing teacher like that. It's all about love and to feel good. No one's going to go, I mean, really, that we've got one chance at life and then we're going to be damned for all, like, eternity in hell. You just right. got to use your brain for two seconds, haven't you? But again, it's that authoritative figure because we were told. I mean, I was. I was brought up Roman Catholic. Oh, boy, so yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was a hard box for me to break. I mean, I did break it. I broke it myself when I was younger because, again, it was that. I was reading it and I was like, this doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. This isn't my God. My God wouldn't punish me if I just make a mistake here one time for eternity yeah. then my soul is going to get ripped apart. No, yeah, really. it don't feel good. No. <laughs> That's that's exactly right, and you know, I the fear is in it already. Like, um, like the thing is the God fearing Christian. Like, mm. how does that it's make not sense? Scary to me. Yeah, like that's oh. that's crazy. Like, why would you? I don't know. You're you're selling fear and damnation, and and that's literally part of this system, a part of the matrix yeah. that you want to remove yourself from and 100 percent. well because jesus was a pleiadian wasn't he so he came down he gave all these teachings and then the dark forces obviously needed to manipulate it and dress up to be something else so it's like it's still there because they couldn't fully interfere so you've got to really you know go through that third language with the bible and things like that it's like you don't take it literally for what it's saying it's like what feels right so for me when i was reading through the bible and stuff when i was younger obviously it was the kids version that's the one i like the most because that's like the all feel good that's probably a good one yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, was like, yeah exactly. I was like this makes sense you know like good triumph and over evil and everyone's feeling love and everything's all good and then you get a little bit older and you get upgraded to the adult version and i was like i don't like this <laughs> this is mean <laughs> very, very strange very, but yeah as i said it's just part of the conditioning wasn't it Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, it's I think that's where most people like wake up once you realize that everything you've been told your entire life is a lie. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go back to that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like once you are awakened to that, like that's kind of what took me. That's what how my path started and that took me down a lot of dark rabbit holes with mm. conspiracy theories, you know, the Illuminati, so on and so forth and and it eventually led to here, but that came with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of like thinking the world's going to end. And now it's like, mm. like that, that's part of their narrative. You know, that's part of that old energy that world's going to end. Like, yeah, I think some things are going to happen because we are going through a major shift. Like, mm. yeah, we're going to have to deal with some, some weather issues and things like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to be all. Yeah, but that's all natural. That's nothing to worry yeah. about. Like. Right, that's not right. Exactly. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a cataclysmic event, a world-ending event that people should fear. Like, you know, I do believe you should be comfortable with living without electricity or learning how to, you know, having that skill, know how to grow food and so on and so forth. But you know, don't, don't spend all your time and energy doing that. You know. Unless that's what you want to do. Yeah. And who am I to tell you? Yeah, anything? obviously, yeah, yeah, everyone's different. I, but I, I, I really like, would. Just ease up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't let the, the fear drive you. That's all. Like, just be self-sufficient. That's what I want to do. That's what I would like to do in the future. But we got a long ways for that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really think that it's it's picked up a lot quicker. Like, I, I do find myself dropping into that occasionally, like, where – because I'm, I'm the same as you, like, I, I literally want to live in a hut in the middle of nowhere, like, anything mm-hmm. against that, I'm like, I don't like it, so once I start panicking and thinking, you know, maybe am I going to stay stuck here, are things not going to change, and then I'm reminded again, look at how far we've come, like, even this, like, we couldn't have done this 10 years ago, I, well, I can't really remember, yeah, about 10 years ago, it's been oh, so, really? such a short amount of time that we've had the internet, the information, like, you know people you can see it all online everyone is striving to be better to be more we want things more ethically sourced we don't want to be torturing animals we don't want everyone is waking up to that and I really think that 
once it gets to enough souls that do that, it's just going to go next level. Because obviously mm-hmm. this that we're being shown is like the lowest density. Like it's so restricted as to what we can actually be and what we can actually do. You know, there's so much more going on behind the scenes. So I really, th- I really think it's going to be soon. I don't, I don't think we're going to be stuck here, you know, wondering, is it going to happen? Like you could, I, I think you can really see the change. Yeah. And, you know, as long as you're not watching the news or something, you can see it. Oh gosh. Yeah, you can, I can, that's all see, I see I, now. That, that's yeah. all I see is like the changes and the people that are doing good. And there's like, there's huge movements of people. There's businesses, corporations that are, that are built doing this. You know what I mean? So that gives me hope. And that's basically, you know, the direction I want to go in, you know, find something that I can do that helps the most people possible in this journey. I forgot what else I was going to say. Well, it's actually funny you say that because I do, I'm very much, you know, I want to look at everything. I have all my fingers in all the pies. So I mm-hmm. have been keeping kind of up to date with the news, with bits that are guided to me. And there is already some fantastic changes being made. I mean, in Britain alone, we've had like a huge like mix up because of the whole Brexit situation. Because mm-hmm. obviously the, the whole Brexit situation is designed for us to wake up to the control that's been put on us because trust me england is not as good as it is dressed up to be whatsoever oh i know um, it's actually, <laughs> oh yeah it's like it's getting bad like they think that we're actually dropping in class that we're going more towards a third world country based on the aid and the um support that's given you know to the less fortunate and stuff it's that divide of the rich and the rich and the poor getting poorer it's like really predominant here but we've seen now that there's basically branches of the government that have turned around and just said we don't want to be a part of this so mps have branched off there was 11 of them which obviously i thought was brilliant new beginnings um and when i was watching them as well i could really get a sense of um you know their soul signature and i was like yeah they're clued in kind of thing and they were just saying that they were like we don't want the country to be torn apart we don't want this to be bad we want it to be good so to see that for the first time from politicians that's the stuff to me now where I'm like the changes are really happening now because that never would have happened not even like a couple of months ago really people oh, yeah. just shut up didn't they yeah yeah so yeah I think there's really really big changes being made absolutely I mean I think... even with, um, your one Trump isn't it yeah he's doing a lot of stuff like behind the scenes that are all good <laughs> doesn't have to be as fearful as everyone make it out to be there's a lot of a lot of good things are going to come to the surface really soon. Right. There's there's definitely good things happening with this energy. Like it is, in you know the the light is increasing, and so mm. so is the darkness. You know, it's I don't know if the darkness is increasing. It's just getting more intense because those people are are like they feel everybody whether you're aware of this or not you know something is happening right now you have that mm-hmm. feeling you're just not sure what it is maybe or maybe you think it's something else i'm telling you it's it's the shift that's going on mm-hmm. but there's 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 so much like energy that is here like all this stuff that we go through and some of it is uncomfortable but it's all for the better, you know, it's all, so we are being like a a fast track of evolution, if you will, and we're raising our consciousness too, so everything is, it's amazing, I I saw a video the other day that this guy, like, filmed this residue that fell down on his car, like, in the middle of the day, and I had just watched a video about the Palladians talking about um like the energy that they store and how they release it in bits because they can't let it all go at once because it would just be such a massive change like immediately that like it just wouldn't be good you know it wouldn't be in our yeah, we wouldn't be able to deal with it whatsoever right yeah it's, it's, well, imagine that just click and then you start seeing fairies and all sorts flying yeah, around right yeah like the, population everyone would lose but, their mind and rightly so because yeah. we've been told that this stuff isn't going on so you gotta be yeah. gently gently with it if the veil just dropped immediately and and oh wow yeah that would not be good for a lot of people 
Um, yeah, I mean, I would love it. I'm, I'm holding my hands up and be like, guys, you can do that to me straight away. I'm for it. But yeah, no, the conscious countenance of the, the collective, they, they wouldn't be able to deal with it whatsoever. Yeah. And that's why they've got to have these light frequencies. Have you seen any of the videos actually that have been capturing the, the light frequencies and the waves coming through? Yes. Oh, so good, isn't it? It's like great. when I was watching those, I was like, oh, it feels so scrammy. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's, it's that physical proof. We can see all these... Yeah. lights all these transformers getting blown and everything like that like oh it's just it's really wonderful That's, to see how quickly that, this is getting picked up yeah and that the, the video that the guy like the these particles fell on his windshield and it just looked like looked like it just they were like sprinkled on there you know just all over his car and when he he like zoomed in really close to it on one of his cameras or something but it was it was such a beautiful design. Have you ever seen um, that that dude that flash freezes water crystals, like when he's speaking love to him and things like that? And it oh, yeah. It. Yeah. So it, it reminded me of that immediately because it's just like it's just like a love. It there's 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 order in it. You know what I mean? Like it's just beautiful design, and it's like glowing with like a rainbow aura around it too. I'm like. And I just saw the Palladium Light video. And then, like, a day later, uh, this YouTuber I follow made a video playing both the Palladium video. It was like a Palladium channeling. And then linking that video to it. I'm like, that's just beautiful. Like, that's crazy. Because that's what I, I I thought as soon as I saw that. With that design, it reminded me of those those water crystals. And then I heard that. And then, the, you know, the Palladians are letting go of this this energy incremental pieces. And that's that's what's changing us that's getting into everything that's cleaning the planet that's cleaning mm -hmm. us our bodies everything everything so that's just amazing to me that like it was a that was like a physical confirmation you know what i mean like that yes. didn't just come out of nowhere that's not possible it doesn't just form with those yeah no no, that's exactly it. The amount of physical evidence now, like, have you watched, like, some of the compilations that have been floating around on YouTube of all, all of these kind of crazy events, you know, sinkholes getting opened up, um, mm -hmm. the different sounds, the light frequencies, like, that's it. It's, it's, it's opening us up slowly but surely, so you're getting all these people that are capturing it, letting it out on YouTube, and then other people are resonating with it, and then it's giving us that allowance for obviously when things really really start to up a gear because obviously it feels like it's intense now but this is just like easy oh. kind of thing yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what gets me excited because i'm like this feels amazing as it is like the difference that i can see with people's mentality is just exponential like it really is that night and day and i've really started to accept that yeah back in that 2012 that with the harmonic convergence it did change the frequency of Gaia and it did take basically back the control from the dark so what we're seeing now with the dark getting so intense it's just their dying attempts they've already lost it's yeah. like go away <laughs> like go yep. sit in your corner and be quiet because we're done with you now you know like we're all about light and love and obviously the dark ones don't like that so they're going to be throwing out as much misinformation as they possibly can, but it's just a matter of time, it really is. And to have faith Absolutely. that we definitely got this. We definitely got it. Absolutely. Because everyone wants it. You know, we want to be safe. We want our children to be well fed and to everyone have education and homes and we deserve it. And we know that. We've always known that. You know? So that's why when you start seeing this information come through, it's like, well yeah, that's it's all we've ever wanted, really. We've always mm -hmm. talked about other beings coming down and sorting out this planet, and you know, lo and behold, it's because they are, <laughs> you know. So I yeah. do, yeah. I see it that's that's absolutely right. That yeah, I, I like how you said that. Like we, it's already, it's already, we already won. Like it's already going to happen. Yeah. You know, the ship is already going to take. And then, uh, you know, Cryon says less than one half of 1% of the population needs to, to wake up. And that's a permanent shift on the planet. So that's, yeah. that's amazing in itself. And that, that is a very obtainable goal. I think a lot of people are waking up every day, you know, and, and oh, yeah. everything that's happening and, and more and more videos are out about it. And I see less 
I see less disinformation now than than just six months ago. You know, I don't see it that much. Um, but then you also, you know, once you start getting into this, you do develop a, a level of discernment, you know, with your, uh, you know, if you just follow your gut, follow your intuition, follow what feels right. And then, you know, even before that, I was able to pretty much discern like what was true, what was real or what was you know, fabricated pretty to a pretty accurate degree. But now I just, I literally follow whatever feels right. And I like that. I love where that takes me, you know. It just so, works. Yes. <laughs> it, yeah, it does. It just, it just works. It just flows. It just keeps me going and I'm, and I'm on the right track, you know, mm. doing everything's Absolutely. aligned. It's all the stars. Sign, isn't it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, you're good. Let's just say all the stars aligned and, uh, you know, everything's set up and ready to go on this trip to, to do the training for this, this reconnection healing. And, I didn't before, like I was worried and didn't think it would work out. And then I just, I just spoke that to the universe. Like, okay, I'm going here. This is going to happen and everything will just fall into place when it's time. And it has, you know, slowly, but surely mm -hmm. I, I'm going and I'm so excited about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like the priest and the pigeon, isn't it? Once you start connecting with it, you realize that things do start getting better in your life when you're not coming from that place of fear and worry and always thinking about things. It's when you think about things and you have this plan and obviously we can't, we can't see all the variables in place. So when we've got these plans, obviously they're going to get derailed a lot of the time, but because we've held onto it as that belief, you know, it really upsets us if it doesn't go right. Whereas when you just relax and you go with the flow and you're happy with whatever comes along, you're going to be happy regardless, aren't you? Yeah. That's like so that's uh, Bashar. That's my favorite thing about Bashar is he says, follow, follow your highest excitement to the best of your ability with zero expectations on the result. So mm. you, can't, you can't expect it to turn out a certain way because then you, you, you might not get what you're supposed to get out of that. You know, you, exactly. you're, whatever happens is meant to happen or whatever your higher self shows you or puts you on the path of it, it might not be what you thought of it but why would then then you might put like a a bad outcome like oh it didn't happen the way i thought it would happen great it happened the way it yeah. needed to happen you know like stop putting a straight jacket on a on your on your thoughts on your plans or anything so if you're just living in your joy and your passion and being more you know kid like more like a child mm. it, it makes such a big difference and and stop so in my my thought has always been since i was like a teenager that if you don't expect something to turn out any particular way then you can never be disappointed on how it turns out absolutely and that's how i've always lived my life you know I, i've never expected anything and i've never been disappointed when it happens mm. that's it, you just being that childlike self isn't it of just excited for whatever comes along and that's why you'll see in psychology as well i mean that's that's rule 101 is connect to your inner child you know and that's in the more you know um neurotypical kind of way isn't it it's like mm -hmm. you can start seeing all these synchronicities it's like okay so that makes sense because of that reason you're just like yeah i like that i'm enjoying that and it does it just makes you feel better when you're coming from that place because it's just when we weren't being programmed because it's only as we became an adult and we were told that if we do this, we get this result. So obviously when we do that and we don't get that result, we get upset. And then the dark forces are winning because obviously that's, that's how they get their num-nums. They eat their loosh. So that's why it's dressed up in that way. So the best thing you can possibly do is defy all logic and just be like, no, I'm going to be happy with whatever. Thank you, please. <laughs> yeah. And then that's really going to take back that control is to not think that, again it's like that whole soul contract thing isn't it when you are thinking like there's something you have to be doing and that you have to be aligning with this what's that creating within you yeah fear and anxiety because you feel like you're not doing the right thing there's absolutely nudges from your higher self being like i want you to do that and you've got your guides and the ancestors mm -hmm. and everything that like yeah yeah if you do this you know just trust us and go with that it's going to be fine and then the more you do it obviously you learn that it is okay but there's there's no conscious countenance like that has to be implemented above the heart center it's like heart center is all. like once you've got that you're covered <laughs> yeah that's 
that's literally how I, that helps me stay out of a lot of like stress and anxiety. It's just like, you know, cause I worry about something or there's an issue I got to deal with or something that I have to do eventually. But I'm like, it's going to work out. It's going to work itself out one way or another. You know, there's, there's a situation of old energy and new energy, not coexisting very well, you know, cause they, they just, can't you know that's another thing too with your vibration like if you're if you're at a really high vibration and someone's at a low vibration like they are going to try to bring you down to their level because they cannot raise to your level so you know that's where a lot of this aggressive stuff comes from with people too and i've had people like literally just like walk away from me like like we're walking like in the same area and they'll like go out of their way to like not be there and i'm just like smiling at them like you know hey how you doing you know i, I try to smile at everybody like it, i think that that just a smile to a random stranger could change their day you know what i mean right because people just don't do that anymore you know well more uh, far now but really they don't not, not really wow we've been talking for an hour that. An hour already. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I should probably let you go. Wow. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to do this again. Mm, no, absolutely. It's been a pleasure, honey. I was talking. Oh to yeah, Georgia. we could just keep talking. I think all day long, really. Could yeah. we? Like the the amount of information you get through about all this, it's like oh, you could write books and books and books upon it, really. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to write a book at some point. You know, <laughs> it's all this yeah, information. Yeah. We're gonna have to. Somebody's gonna do yeah. it. That'd be brilliant. I definitely would like to do. Well, I did mention um in one of my videos that I've been pulled to write a book, but I'm trying to come at it from a little bit more of the obviously the science uh, science fiction stuff. So how it's been shown to me is that's obviously a lot of the third language stuff, and that's a lot of the stuff that's. Uh, pre-warmed up our conscious countenance because of all the stuff that's in science fiction is stuff that's obviously outside in in the other side of the veil so that is absolutely potentiality so I thought if I connect with it that way it's a bit nicer than I guess like decoding the DNA molecule like I don't think <laughs> many people are going to want to sit there and read a book about that like probably yeah. just me being a weirdo <laughs> you know that I like to do but. yeah that'd be a very selective group of people that would be interested in that <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so i've definitely been trying to oh. serve away my cat is snoring something rotten so i think yeah well, it's at least it's not hissing anymore <laughs> yeah yeah the little grump the grumpy puss is bless her it's quite funny it's actually the one that um <laughs> she gets grumpy she has got a little hitler mustache i'm not even joking i'll have to send you a photo of it like, <laughs> yeah please do but, yeah <laughs> i'll do that so yeah That's great it's been an absolute pleasure sweetheart thank you very much for having me yes his pleasure is all mine not a problem i was talking to bonesy the other day and um i think next time we'll do is have uh have you on the behind the veil show so it'll be all three of us and we can we can all talk so we we'll just have to be careful of of when we speak so we don't all start talking over each other <clears throat> uh went into uh what was that that thing you were playing the other day on one of your videos oh with a ham pan is that was a ham pan <laughs> Pan pan or like tank drum or what's the other one? Pan pan tank drum and it's something else. But yeah, it's got several names just to make things super yeah, that easy. Was for cool. Us. That, that I don't know. I like that. That was yeah. Pretty sounds. That was nice. And then I didn't know you were. Uh, I didn't know you were a card reader either. And then yeah. What else do you do? <laughs> what else do I do? Um. So, well, it's actually tarot was one of the first things that started to really open me up to the really? esoteric realms because um, it was something that I'd always wanted to connect with. Um, and it was uh, last year, it was finally like, okay, now's the time to do it. So I do the tarot reading, I do channeling. So I do channel um, the Octorians, uh, Council of Light, um, and my higher self, obviously, I, I try to clean up the channel so I can come through a little bit more effectively. Um, crystals play with the crystals that they're hard to learn all the differences with them because when you look at them they're like they're all kind of doing the same thing anyway um and cryon's been obviously i don't know if you've connected with that but he's been reminding us that things like tarot and things like that is from old energy for us to be able to understand and connect with the other side of the veil 
what we're learning to do is get rid of tarot, get rid of connecting to crystals, saging and anything like that. We don't need to do any of that because what we're doing is holding light within ourselves and we're connecting directly to source through ourselves with the information. Um, that's why we don't have to do the tarot reading. So it was only because I got pulled to do that the other day. I was like, I was feeling like Guy needed a bit of a chat. So I was like, you know what, I'll do that. But um, yes, yeah, so I'm trying to not to do that, to implement it more from just coming from myself. So it's like I've picked things up to learn them and then I'm dropping them back down again. Because again, it's about finding what's right for you, isn't it? It's like, exactly. you know, we've all got our unique, unique journeys. I mean, even Dolores Cannon, wasn't it? Not Dolores Cannon, no, different one. Um, who was the one that does the, the tarot cards? That was the, she's like one of the main ones. And she's basically turned around and been like, I don't like tarot. And she's turned really, really Christian, like, like heavily into the Bible is the Bible kind of thing. Really? That's interesting. Um, it's, I, oh, I did have the cards, uh, but I gave them, I think, to someone else. Um, doesn't matter, I guess. But uh, if people are watching this, they probably know who I'm on about, like the big main household brand of tarot reading. Even she's been saying, like, as I said, she stepped into um, teachings with the Bible and she doesn't use tarot cards anymore because it can be influenced differently that how you don't want again because it's old energy anything can come in and like piggyback off you if you're not holding that vibration so it's very much to do with yourself and working with you kind of thing yeah sense. i've heard him uh, <laughs> i've heard him speak a, a lot about that uh lately especially that he's talking about the the people that are in the esoteric teachings and and you know channelings and so on and so forth in the old energy are having trouble doing the same thing in the new energy mm. just you know like that like they think they lost it and then they didn't lose it it just you know the the station changed the frequency changed so you yeah, that's it. to go over here you know and so that's it yeah no, no exactly, exactly you know, it's like in the old energy, I think it was probably a lot more difficult to get these things done, to get that's it to see the other side of the veil. Now that veil is so thin that mm. really, if you have a desire to, you can you can look beyond the veil. You know what I mean? Oh, abs absolutely. No, that's exactly it. Like Crian's made that so clear to me. Is just you know, it's absolutely incredible. It's wonderful, and it worked in the old energy, but we're in that new energy now where we're having to change to that different station and that different station is us with ourselves you know rather than giving our power away again by thinking like you know because when I first started doing tarot reading I'm just like throwing down the cards like tell me about my life tell me about my life like I need to know I need to know and it becomes this addictive like kind of real negative thing that you end up doing to yourself reaching outside of yourself thinking you know the the these cards are going to be able to tell me more about me than I'm going to be able to tell me about me like that's why I started to realize that wasn't really something that I wanted to do because I even asked the Pleiadians, I was like, should I do like tarot readings on YouTube and this, that, and the other? And they're like, if you want. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how they ask everything. Whenever you ask anything, they're like, if, if you want, if it makes you happy, do it. Like, because yeah. again, there's nothing you have to do. Like, just do whatever brings you joy because that's really what changes the world is when we're holding the light despite all the odds you know with these people that have been nasty to us and with all these negative reverberations it's by standing within our power and just saying i'm going to love it all regardless that's way more powerful than any of these other tools that we obviously pull along with us up into the 2012 energy because that's that's really when stuff changed you know when that harmonic convergence came through it completely flipped everything you know we seen with the pole and everything shifting like mm -hmm. all of the scientific evidence is there with it now so yeah it's exciting but it is a difficult process like as i said i started with doing all the typical things and thinking that that's what i should do and then it was all of a sudden then quickly changed on me it was like i would have rather have done tarot for years and then be like oh yeah i've, I've paid my dues you know i connect with it in that way and now it's just like no it's already taken away from me i was like oh, okay okay <laughs> i guess i'll sit here and meditate then yeah <laughs> damn it you don't need it yeah i think it's great that you're that connected with your higher self and and whatever else cryon pleiadians however however that works that's what i've been working on i, I, uh, I don't know there's something something not 
happening yet. Like, I feel like I'm so close, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the bridge is there. Like, I know the bridge is there. It's just, I don't know. That's just probably just too much distraction still in my life, you know? I, I feel like I need to just let so many things go and and just, mm. yeah. Well, big changes are coming. I, I, I just feel it. I know it. And I'm creating an entirely new life. So I... I'll get there. Well, that's it. That's it, honey. That is you connecting with your higher self. Yeah. 100% oh, yeah. Because you're guiding yourself through this. You know, you, you've put out that intent to be like, right, I want to connect. I want to improve. I want to change things. So your higher self is now grabbing you by the hand and be like, all right, I'm going to nudge you when you need to. I'm going to send you this synchronicity when you need it. That kind of confirmation to, you know, feel a bit more confident within ourselves because that's what synchronicities basically are in the physical realm is just for us to have that allowance within ourselves to be like oh i was thinking of feeling that anyway and now i've got that confirmation <laughs> great <laughs> you know um it's just those like little nudges so yeah no i think i feel like you're definitely already locked onto that path um it's very much as i said a case of putting out that intent and then your higher self is just going to be grabbing you anyway so it's not to worry to overthink it um to yeah put those those boxes of belief back onto yourself put those filters back on it's to remove those and just as you say like you've been doing is just to relax and go with it and you know you know life works out that way mm -hmm. you know i've done it so many years now i mean yeah. the amount of different jobs that i've had has just been oh my god insane <laughs> yeah like two to three different ones um a year on average since i left school like condensed wow. and that was like yeah so many different things and I would do it all the time and people would ask me and be like how can you kind of do that just quit a job if you know if they spoke to me poorly if they tried to get me to do something that I didn't want I'd be like all right fuck you see you later and mm -hmm. I just quit and people are like I don't understand how you can do that it's like because I, I just trust I know that there's thousands it's gonna of work out people. and that's that's, that's what I'm my hang up is now <laughs> yeah it's like mm -hmm. I know I need to walk away from what I'm doing now just I don't I don't know I don't feel ready but it's just like it's a matter of just trusting and doing but like this is this is going to be a major major change like before it wasn't I've 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 switched jobs so many times you know I always just go from there to there and it's the same thing like if I don't like how I'm being treated then I'll just go find a place that'll treat me better you know what I mean and it, it's really easy to do in the sales world and, and if you have yeah. any abilities at all in the sales world which is really just about talking to people. So I feel like everything has been, you know, everything in my life has been about training me to go forward into this new energy, this new life that's coming for whatever the purpose is going to be, you know, for the healings and everything is what I feel like. That's mm -hmm. my purpose for being here is to do these healings and to facilitate the healings for people and the planet and, and everything. I just learned the other day that I, that you can actually like send energy to a specific part of the planet. Like I had no idea like that was a thing. And I was like, well, shit. Yeah, let's do that. Like, <laughs> you know, it, you know, just trust your higher yeah, self. Right. Like, all right, well you, you take it where it needs to go. Like, yeah. Mm. Now, I, I can reach That's anybody. Actually, I like watching the news now. Cause whenever I can see, you know, things that are going really bad because things are getting shaken up, I just send it all the love and light that I possibly can to raise that vibration up. I'm like, I'm going to engage with it in that way that's going to feel more beneficial for everyone because they're the ones that need the love and light at the end of the day. But yeah, so it's, it's fantastic to see that obviously you're um, resonating very much with the grid and everything because where I'm a Pleiadian starseed. So when we came down here, we came down here in the time of um, Lemuria and we basically seeded the, the conscious grid. So the crystalline grid mm. is part of our conscious countenance to help elevate everyone up so it's that pool of information that people can draw from but obviously before 2012 the energies were different so people weren't able to connect with it and so as it's coming up uh, obviously it's switched now in 2012 that's where more and more people are able to pull from that pool of information that we came and put through to say you know the whole loving yourself and all the feel goods and mm. you know that there's there's a lot of stuff you know magic and all this stuff, you know we're meant to live 900 years <laughs> yeah. oh that's something i've been working on a lot with um talking to my cellular structure and the innate mm -hmm. that's that's what yeah i've been listening to so much cry on it's oh i know i love cry i love crying so much <laughs> no, 
it just resonates so deeply you know it's and even that like with with the innate and he's like the body's designed to live forever like you know as long as you need it to live and that makes sense you know mm-hmm. like don't ask me why it just we makes sense know. like <laughs> like okay yeah that's, that's how it is and we have control over it so if you think you know we manifest diseases and you know we do it as individuals and as the the masses also and uh, so if we manifest that then why can't we manifest a a regenerative body that just continues to live for hundreds and hundreds of years absolutely well i mean it's something that i had to implement literally myself um how i got I mean, I had a lot of things put me on my ass to come into these teachings. Like, literally, my higher self was like, we'll take all of our toys away from her so she can really pay attention to what's going on. It's like, cheers for that. Um, But it was actually, I was struggling with my job. Like, I was getting Mm. bullied. It was really not good because it's a support worker for adults with learning difficulties. So it's not, you know, a fun environment to be in. It's a difficult (laughs) environment to be in. And I'd had all this other personal stuff go on that was just like, you know, everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. And then I ended up having a bike accident because I was like getting caught up in this mindset against what I used to be of being like, do you know what? It's not serving me anymore. Instead of just quitting it, I was like trying to tell myself like I should, that I should stick mm-hmm. at it. I was trying to, you know, get that box of belief that most, most people do have, you know, I've got bills to pay. I can't do this. I've got to do that. So I ended up having a bike accident and it literally was just like, you've got to stop and reevaluate everything now. Like you've got to change how you're looking at things. And then you start realizing actually everything that I'm looking at now is just stuff that I thought of before, <laughs> which is quite interesting. So it's, it, it, was, it was an interesting ride for me for obviously that to change so, so much because I went from, you know, it's really, it's such a backwards way that every, that's what's really hard for me to explain because I started off obviously where I'm appeared in Starseed we come in with all of this knowledge, all of this feeling, all of this emotion. So what I'm doing now is I'm reconnecting back to my child self that actually was already working with the grid, that was already doing all of this this crazy stuff. Um, and, oh, that was it. I wanted to say about the, the healing. So when I uh, came off my bike, I basically got my leg trapped underneath it and smashed my shoulder and ended up like really messing up my shoulder. Connecting with Nate and everything like that, I've ended up healing myself from it. Like because awesome. you get into that mental space that you can actually talk to your cellular structure of your body and to feel it is incredible because it was basically I'd knocked it out partially, so it's partially dislocated, and then I had where it so it was happened so long ago, my muscles obviously fused around it to hold it because mm. I also had a previous injury when I was a child that had made it a bit more malleable, so that's why okay. it wasn't like a real big deal. It was kind of like, oh my arm's hurting again whatever um and then I, I really started to notice it as I started to connect with these teachings I was like something's wrong with my arm I was like I just became you know intrinsically aware that I had to do something about it and as I was listening to these teachings it was starting to make sense and then just I started to just go for it and it is a process it's not something that instantly happens but now I can completely move it and I'm like I do hoop dance and everything and the alignment I mean that was so strange when I came into alignment I was like oh my god I've been so out of alignment for like I don't even know how long like you know because this has gone on for quite some time at that point and it's like that's it the proof's in the pudding the proof's in the pudding and again that's what I kind of needed because even though I've connected with this when I was younger through all my explorations to do with you know very scientific realms as I said psychology philosophy it was very neurotypical kind of stuff I ended up really pulling myself away from my true self because I'm putting mm. all these boxes of belief on myself so as I said, I'm now unpacking everything to come back to what I used to know and it's like this is so confusing you know <laughs> I'm like what a weird way of doing it couldn't I have just stayed with it but obviously I wouldn't be transmuting any energies I wouldn't be doing the work yep. you know we've come here to do the work not to have a holiday as Cryon reminds us mm-hmm. so frequently you know we call you light workers and it's like yeah I know I know damn it damn <laughs> like, you. Can't I can't break for a minute <laughs> yeah you said that is a little ass backwards but that's right yeah you know, there's something you had to learn I guess for we're doing that that's um well, it's, just, it's just so I could connect with the grid and obviously for me to put that into the grid to you know go so far away because where 
my last incarna um, incarnation was in Lemuria. So I haven't incarnated since then. So oh, wow. I had to really, yeah, that's why it was a real struggle for me as a child and everything. Because as I said, I, I came in and I picked up my Akashic record of back then. And then I'm looking out at the world and like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. No is really what I remember and then as I said I then I had to adopt all these other things so I could transmute them by pulling through the information from my previous life to transmute those energies not just me but for the collective because obviously the Pleiadians were the cedars we've come down to mm. help this is this is exactly you know where the parenting kind of role in that sense we're here to guide so it's like okay that can make me relax a bit more with why my life went so strange because I'm like okay that makes me feel better knowing that I've put out something from going through these difficulties. And that's not just me. That is every single person on this oh, planet, yeah. like single soul that has had negative, you know, effects in our lives to be able to hold that light. That is what changes the conscious countenance for the rest of the collective that can't, you know, those people that are otherwise getting ridden hard by their ego and they're just, you know, the younger souls as well, bless them. They haven't gone through other incarnations. You know, I've, done this several times already this ascension so that's mm. why it's in my akashic record and it's something that i resonate with so that's why for me i'm like i want it to happen now because <laughs> i know it's a possibility i feel it in my bones you know i know it through the connection with the teachings and everything and with prior and obviously confirming everything i'm like yep yeah it's it's coming up to that time now guys that mm. things are really going to change i mean i actually um I actually predicted this um, a couple of years ago while just having drinks with my mates. I just started spouting off one day. My higher self just came through and I was just like, there's going to be a conscious evolution soon. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah, yeah, no, you watch. It's going to be in our lifetime and everything because they were going down that dark path. of you know, The world's fucked and it's this way and that way. And I was like, no, it's not. No, it's not. It's going to be changing. It's going to change soon. And then <laughs> obviously then I picked up these teachings and that was those little touchstones that you create. It, within yourself within your lifetime that's why it's really important to connect with what's right for you because you know hearing that and then I was like shit yeah I just said that casually after a glass of wine one day <laughs> like, so yeah I trust this now you know yeah <laughs> I love that. how you just said conscious evolution by the way mm. yes no, <laughs> no that's why I thought it was so um like beautifully succinct that we've ended up connecting because that's exactly what it is it is a conscious evolution because obviously we look at our evolution as it's been put down with the darwin theory obviously we know that that's not true but the way it's explained is it would almost expect us to physically be changing but it's not like that's what i was saying when i was having that drink with my mates so i was like it's not going to be a physical evolution we're not like going to finally get rid of that tailbone or whatever it is or the spleen that we didn't really need or anything like that you know it's not it's not going to be that it's going to be a conscious evolution because I was already seeing it even though I wasn't connecting with these teachings I could already see the changes because like I've got a really good memory I can remember from being a child and looking out into the world and wow. I can physically yeah I, I, well I don't know if you saw on my video like my earliest memories from when I was two years old so uh, it's like it, yeah something that i've like really been able to um be connected with and that's what's helped me immensely that's the only reason i've got a good memory is because it was when i was picking up senses and feelings um and everything because i'm where i'm connected to the grid i obviously pick up the emotions and everything of everyone a lot stronger even before 2012 so i had to have that kind of again that touchstone within myself as i started to connect with these teachings to be like yeah no i can see the difference is happening now like people weren't at all like they are now like people were so throw away so you know negative it was it was more into the old energy you know they were just ruminating around in that and i can clearly see now that everyone's just wanting to drink from that pool of light you know people want to be happy and safe because we know we deserve it every single person deserves it not a single soul deserves to suffer not even the ones that are ridden hard by the dark or whatever even the ones that are in the power that shouldn't be those ones need our love and light too, because that's what heals yep. the world. That's what transmutes that energy, is it not? Like, the most powerful thing you can do is to love. <laughs> that's it. Love. Love yourself. Love everybody. That's, you know, they, these, the, the affirmations, when you speak these things out into the existence, you know, you speak them to your body, you talk to your cellular structure, you talk to your innate, your higher self. Talk to yourself, you know. I, you know, 
say you're, you you love if you don't feel this way even if you do i still do it you know i would say i love you to the mirror and i say you know you're worthy of love you deserve love you are love every day and that's powerful like when you speak the things out that you know you 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 pick up that vibration that frequency and that's powerful Absolutely. especially in this new energy so I, I recommend everyone to do that you know if if you haven't and if you're not already um I've also started seeing uh I can I can pick up on people's auras a little bit. I can't I'm not real good at doing it like to with other people yet unless they're like sitting still, you know, but I can see my aura in the mirror and that's Oh, that's really cool. That's awesome. It's see, like that's, a, that's what kind of annoys me a bit like where I don't have any of those kind of things. I'm mm -hmm. like I want to do that, but obviously I've got that fear, that block because of things that I experienced throughout my life. It was very much, you know, science. Mm. That's right. You can't go down any other path. And that's why I filled myself up with all this knowledge just because that's what I was told. You know, I was belittled. If I didn't know it, then I wasn't allowed to say anything. So that's so cool that you managed to see the auras. You might have to teach me how to do that. <laughs> I have no idea. I, uh, you know, someone just told me that you should be able to do that. Like I saw it on a YouTube video and I was, so I, I looked in the mirror and was like trying to do it or, you know, as I was speaking affirmations and, and, you know, I just kind of zoned out mm. just looking at myself, you know, and, mm. and I tried it a couple of times and then, you know, nothing came of it. So I was like, all right. So then I, uh, I didn't think much of it for a couple of weeks. And then I think like a month later I tried it again and all of a sudden I saw, like my aura is like a yellow. Oh, nice. It's almost like a like a pale yellow kind of like a translucent pale yellow, I guess you could say. And then mm -hmm. uh, then I tried it and I just started. Like, I saw the whole like just it's like just right above my head and then it goes down to my shoulders. Like everything that I can see in the mirrors is surrounded by that that energy. And then oh, now cool. like now if I if I start to see it. You know those um those pictures that where you had like hold real close and then back up to see the image like you had to kind of zone out on them. Oh yeah, I was addicted to those when I was younger. Oh, that's kind of exactly how I see it. So I have to get to that zone. So I like stare in my own eyes until everything gets blurry, and then I can see the aura field come up. Oh, nice! That is the best way that's been explained because I have looked at it in the past and I was like, I I don't I don't get it. Like I don't know how I'm going to connect. But again, as I said, I put that. That block on but now you've explained that and that's a touchstone to something I had when I was a child I was always oh just so in awe of those things like to see yeah. those pictures come up like and it's basically what this whole ascension kind of thing is isn't it it's like to yeah. get out of your own way for a second and then all of a sudden this information starts coming through and you're like shit this is beautiful I love this <laughs> <laughs> and you keep wanting to do more <laughs> yeah I, I love it and like now it's to a point that like I, I want to learn and see other people's too but like mm -hmm. I, I guess if I keep doing it it'll it'll I'll be able to see it quicker and, and faster because now it takes you know I can't it takes like 10 to 20 seconds for me to zone out and get mm -hmm. it at state and I um but now like if I if I do that and then you know I'm saying the, the I love yous and so on and so forth I can like I can get to a relaxed point and I can see like like I don't know the crown chakra opens up but like it goes from just a little layer to like like a crown of yellow like above my head that's like up here you know what I mean and it's crazy I could just see it grow and transform as I like let loose and you know talk about love so cool that's that. yeah I love that <laughs> oddly enough that is one of the first like tidbits I got to it was it was all around the same kind of time um i actually met someone when i went off to do um like a hoop festival type thing because i do hoop dancing and it was when i've just started um and someone was like you've got a blue aura like you're really blue and i was like okay <laughs> i didn't i didn't know any about that stuff you know at that point i was kind of like you know you know a bit like are they making it up you know i wasn't really trusting any of this information but obviously it led me to go as i said down other roots and I was connected with Tara and this and the other obviously I have to find out now blue is Canadians and indigo children and everything to do with that so I was like is okay that, that makes go yeah I read about that before yeah yeah so it's just um 
people that are obviously just more connected. It's just it, one of the labels that it, it's basically the same as saying, you know, starseed um, and everything like that. So it's all really in the same category as I see it personally, because obviously people love their labelings and they love things to be separate. But I like to lump as many things in as possible. I'm just like anyone that's like a little bit more tapped in to me is like starseed and you know, indigo light worker and um, what else was there? No, I think that was about it, the labels, isn't it? You've got obviously like Twin Plane Journey as well, like that's designed yeah. to bring people into that information. But yeah, and yeah, Lightworker came through actually when I was being a support worker and that came through as um, on Facebook actually, as something that randomly came up as advertised and I started reading it and I was like, it's like they're fucking talking about my life, like what? <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm not a support worker I'm a light worker and then you know again it's that snowball effect it's so interesting when you you know you really sit there and you go through your meditations and you connect with all those breadcrumbs that we left ourselves you know that we're guiding ourselves the whole time and even when we felt so alone and lost um especially for those that resonate obviously with being a star seed and indigo and everything like that you know we're the ones that we really felt very isolated and alone in the world and it's really wonderful once you start to realize that we never were we were always connected in that way it's just we didn't have that conscious countenance because obviously we were children so you've got to have that part it's the three isn't it it's um mind body spirit and once you connect all of them that's when you're really cooking with gas so you've got to have a little bit of this, a little bit of that so you know you've got to empower yourself with, with the knowledge but then you've also got to try and get rid of the knowledge and come from the heart center and you know be connected with the body but remember you're just like you know in the esoteric realms and everything so yeah that's why it's difficult because yeah, there's a lot going on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to work for it. As I said, light worker, isn't it? It's like emphasis yeah. on the worker part. We're not here for a holiday. <laughs> yeah, you said that in your email yesterday. I like that. Like worker, we're working. That's yeah. Yeah, I like yeah. it. <laughs> all right i'm gonna have to stop this because we were gonna talk for like hours. I can just sense it. Oh yeah, that's it. We could just keep going, honey. Uh, that hour and a half now. I think. Yep, hour and fifty minutes. Super awesome. Well um we'll say bye here but don't hang up i'm just going to end the video but the okay talk. um all right guys yeah thanks for uh joining us today um we're gonna have kaz back on i believe on a behind the veil episode now that we've got to know her a little bit and we're going to continue on so tell us um you know what's your youtube channel how do people find you i'll put the links below but you know um spell it out oh, yeah cool yeah i'm really bad with the whole like advertising which is funny considering i'm from sales background of sales and i was also a charity daughter -door fundraiser you think i'd be able to nail this but <laughs> yeah. find me on youtube so it's curious with a k um and obviously i just share whatever i'm feeling called to at the time i don't have like a one set caliber i don't have anything that's like facebook or anything like that but i am planning on putting together um a wordpress so kind of like a daily blog that's gonna have a little bit more of the scientific psychology kind of viewpoints as well so i'm, I'm trying to come at things from as many different angles as possible so if you want to stop by obviously come on the channel have a little look see subscribe and do all that fun things um and then yeah just keep an eye out for the stuff like this so thank you very much for obviously joining us here today love and light sweet one beautiful i love it all right guys thanks for joining us again um please like share subscribe and just love yourself, man. Be the change that you want to see. And I love you guys. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>